Hello everyone. In the previous videos, we have discussed about what exactly is reproduction. And during that discussion, we also saw that reproduction has two types. That is, the reproduction can either be asexual, generally involving only single parent, and the reproduction can also be sexual, which is majorly biparental. Now, in this video, we are going to talk about sexual reproduction in detail. Now, sexual reproduction involves the fusion of two special cells which are known as gametes. So, you can see in this slide which is given behind me, we are able to see that there are two special cells. This one which is a motile cell, this is known as male gamete and the other cell which is non-motile over here, it is known as the female gamete. So, these two gametes, they are going to fuse together to form the single cell known as zygote. So, this is something about the crux of sexual reproduction. Now, we will talk about each and every step in detail. So, we will see that sexual reproduction foremost involves the formation and the fusion of special cells of our body known as sex cells or also known as gametes. Now, why am I calling them special cells? I am calling them special cells. Why? Because they are having half the number of chromosomes as compared to all the other cells of our body. Now suppose each and every somatic cell of our body has 46 chromosomes, we know this thing. But then gametes are going to have half the number and that will be 23. So this is the speciality of gametes, that is they are having half the number of chromosomes. The gametes are formed by a special type of cell division which is known as meiosis. We have studied about that in class 11th. Sexual reproduction will then form gamete. Then the gametes are going to fuse and the fusion of the gamete is going to lead to a structure that is a single cell known as zygote. The gametes which are having half the number of chromosomes are represented by N. That means this is the haploid number. So when two gametes that is N plus N are going to fuse, they form a diploid structure which is known as zygote. So we can say that zygote is the first diploid cell of our body. Then it is this zygote which further keeps on dividing mitotically by certain divisions known as cleavage divisions and develops into a new organism. So we can see by these two lines we have somewhere summarized the whole sexual reproduction. Now we will talk about it in more detail. So sexual reproduction involves the fusing gametes. These two fusing gametes, they can either be produced by the same individual. Yes, same individual. That is only one individual is able to produce two type of gametes. And in that case, we will call the reproduction as uniparental. Why? Because only one parent is involved. Now this is somewhere in contrast with what we have been studying in our younger classes that is sexual reproduction involves two organisms but that is not always true. We have seen that sexual reproduction can also be uniparental but yes two different gametes have to be surely be present in the case of sexual reproduction. And the other type of sexual reproduction can also involve the fusing of gametes which are obtained from different individuals of the opposite sex and in that case we call the reproduction as biparental, something with which we are very much familiar. For example, in the case of humans, the male gamete comes from the male sex 
and the female gamete comes from the female sex. So human beings undergo biparental type of sexual reproduction. So we have seen that sexual reproduction involves a special type of division known as meiosis. Meiosis is also known as reductional division. Why it is known as reductional division? Because it results in the formation of special cells which have got half the number of chromosomes. After meiosis what happens? There is the fusion of gametes and this step is also known as syngamy. So gamete formation takes place by meiosis and then there is syngamy. Next, because of the fusion of two gametes that is the male and the female gametes, the sexual reproduction results in the offsprings that are not identical to the parents. Why? Because two different type of gametes have fused to form the individual. That means now there is combination of different cells. There is different type of genetic material which is fusing. And as a result, the offspring formed, they do not resemble the parents and even they are not exact replicas of their siblings also. So that is very important that sexual reproduction causes variations among individuals and it is these variations which somewhere help in the course of evolution. So sexual reproduction has a very important role in evolution as well. Then we can say that sexual reproduction produces variations and these genetic variations among the offsprings allow evolution to proceed. Next is that we can say sexual reproduction is an elaborate why it is an elaborate process because it has to involve the formation then fusion of gametes so it is a very elaborate process and it is also complex and it is also a slow process as compared to asexual reproduction in asexual reproduction only one parent is involved so that parent will just keep on dividing and will increase the number. Whereas in the case of sexual reproduction, we have seen that there is requiring a formation, then fusion of special cells, which are known as gametes. So that is the reason sexual reproduction is a elaborate, is a complex and is a very slow process in comparison to asexual reproduction.